Oh, hey, it's the episode where they kill off Wesley, only to bring him right back to life. Or as I like to call it, the happiest 30 seconds of my life. Nah, I'm just kidding. I like Wesley. I just gotta get my shots in. This is a review of the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, Hide and Q. If you have not seen this episode and you don't want to know what happens in it, be warned. Spoilers beyond this point. Q's back! But it's only his second episode, so we're not sure yet whether we should be excited about that or not. Should we? Be? Let's find out. The Enterprise is on its way to a Federation colony that needs emergency medical assistance after a mining explosion, and the crew is all business. But, uh-oh, it's that big orange space fence again. That can mean only one thing. Q. Picard's like, ugh, dude, you have the worst timing, can we just not? But Q insists, my business with you takes precedence over your ailing colony, he tells Picard. As a result of our last encounter, the Q became interested in humanity, and I have come to make you an offer that could lead to the realization of your most impossible dream. A successful film career outside of major sci-fi or superhero franchises? Eh. Riker steps up like, there are lives at stake on our colony, Q. We don't have time for your games. And Q says, thanks for the setup, sucker. Game on! In a flash, Picard finds himself alone on the bridge, cut off from the rest of the ship, while the remainder of the bridge crew are transported to an alien planet. Q is here, dressed up as a 19th century French army officer, and he calls Riker over to discuss the rules of the game they're about to play over a glass of refreshing lemonade. Q offers drinks to the others as well, but they aren't as accepting. Worf even pours out his rosé presumably because he prefers a nice white wine on a hot day like this. Q tells Riker that they will play a game, and the object of the game will be to stay alive, and the game will be completely unfair. Tasha doesn't like the sound of that, and she protests, and Q calls a penalty on her and banishes her to the penalty box, which means she has to go back to the Enterprise and hang out with Picard. But since there's only room for one player at a time in the penalty box, if anyone else makes a penalty, Tasha is dead. Clever way to introduce tension into the story, eh? The rest of the crew, forced to play a game refereed by Q, who is determined to treat them unfairly, with the life of their comrade Tasha hanging in the balance? Never mind, it goes nowhere. Q releases her from the penalty box after a couple of minutes. We're never made to feel she's in the slightest danger whatsoever. Q pops up to the Enterprise and reveals to Picard that his purpose in running this little game is to test Commander Riker, in whom the Q have taken a particular interest. Picard's like, you dope, Riker's gonna beat your ass. Q says, oh yeah, you wanna bet? Picard says, yeah, let's bet that if Riker wins, you piss off out of humanity's face forever. Deal. But if I lose, can we pretend later that the bet was just for me to leave the Enterprise alone so I can come back for another episode? You're on! Down on the planet, Riker and the others have discovered they're not alone. Worf takes off on a scouting mission and comes back with his report. There's a group of soldiers, dressed in 19th century French uniforms, but they aren't French. They've got hairy pig faces. Worf describes them as vicious animal things. Excuse me, Worf. But Tellarites are founding members of the Federation. I think they're entitled to a little respect. The soldiers arrive and start shooting, and hey, those aren't muskets! Q pops back down, temporarily taking Data's form, and casually informs Riker that if he wants to help his friends out, he can just send them back to the Enterprise, because guess what? Riker's been given Q powers! So, Riker waves his hand, and Worf, Geordi, and Data all whoosh back to the Enterprise. Riker remains on the planet, laughing like a totally sane and normal person. Q walks up and says, okay, here's the deal. We're the Q, we're pretty much the best thing going, but humanity has a quality that compels you to explore and to learn. We don't really have that. So I'm offering to make you one of us, to give you Q powers so you can teach us about this human condition. Now, doesn't that sound neat? Riker's like, nah. Q says, okay, whatever, I'm out of here, but you can keep the powers. Then, the bridge crew returns, along with Wesley and Captain Picard. The soldiers attack! Worf runs after them and gets himself stabbed with a bayonet. 
Then Wesley runs over to Worf and Wesley gets stabbed. And I guess Riker thought Wesley was somebody else because he gets real mad and yells, damn it to hell, and waves his arm and uses his Q powers to whoosh everybody back to the Enterprise, alive and well. Picard looks at Riker like, these things you've done, only the Q can do that. And Riker's like, yeah, I guess the cat's out of the bag, cat. Spelled with a Q, I, I guess that gag doesn't really come across when spoken. Picard and Riker have a chat in the ready room. Picard says, okay, so obviously Q's given you these powers because he wants to manipulate you, so you just have to resist the temptation to use them. Riker's like, got it, no problem. The Enterprise arrives at that colony with the medical emergency. Riker leads an away team. They pull a child out of some rubble, but it's too late. Dr. Crusher pronounces her one dead kid. They get back to the ship, and Riker's pissed at Picard. He says, I could have saved that kid. I got that cue in me. But no, I had to promise you to resist temptation. Well, this sucks. I want a staff meeting. So they have a staff meeting. Riker addresses the crew. He tells them, so I've got cue powers, but don't worry, I'm not a monster. I'm still the same Will Riker you've always known for the past two months. Picard and the others seem skeptical. Q appears, dressed as a monk. You can tell he's having fun with this one because of all the gratuitous costume changes. And tells Picard, all you can offer Riker is jealousy. I can offer him the greatest adventure ever taken by a human. Riker, demonstrate your friendship to your crew. Use your powers to give them each a gift. Riker turns to Picard like, may I? And Picard suddenly seems supremely confident and says, yeah, man, go ahead. So Riker goes one by one and uses his Q powers to give his friends a gift. He transforms Wesley into a completely different person. That's a gift to everyone, really. I'm sorry. I said nothing personal, Wes, but it's got to be done. He's about to turn Data into a real boy, but Data refuses the gift, saying he would know his humanity was just the result of Q powers, so it would never truly be real to him. Riker's like, okay, whatever, robo-flop, and he moves on to Geordi. He changes Geordi's eyes, giving him more typical human vision. But after grabbing a quick peek at Tasha, Geordi's like, okay, I'm good. Give me back my old eyes. I'm not accepting gifts from Q. So Riker switches Geordi back to the old eyes, then turns to Worf. And he's like, Worf, I know what you want. And he makes Worf a horny girlfriend. And they hiss at each other and have a little fight. And Geordi's like, is that sex? Worf says, yeah, it's sex, but there's no place for it in my life now because I guess I'm celibate or something. I don't know, I'm still really poorly drawn at this point. Now Wesley speaks up, like, hey, change me back too. I don't want to be deprived of the joys of adolescence. So Riker changes him back too, then turns to Picard and says, they all turned down my gifts. I feel like a fool. Picard's like, good, you should, because you are one. Now sit your fool ass down. He turns to Q and says, Riker has resisted temptation and defeated you at your own game. Now pay off your wager and get lost. Q tries to argue, but his fellow members of the Continuum enforce the terms of the wager for him, and Q vanishes from the Enterprise, screaming in a flash of light. And Jordy's like, is that sex? That's pretty much it. Everybody's back to normal. The continuing mission continues. See you next week, folks! It's an extremely first season episode of TNG, this one. Not the worst, not as lazy and derivative as The Naked Now, not as aggressively offensive as Code of Honor, but representative of what made TNG such a rotten show in its first year. Part of the problem is something I already touched on in the summary, which is that the episode teases a much more interesting premise than what it actually ends up being about. Q as the gleefully corrupt games master, forcing the crew to take part in a competition with Tasha in the penalty box to be pushed into oblivion if any of the others make a single mistake? I'm not saying it would have been a good episode. This is season one TNG. It probably wouldn't have. But that at least sounds more promising than Q wants to make Riker a Q so he can understand humanity's curiosity, doesn't it? That's another problem. It seems clear that the seed from which this episode grew was the concept of Riker gets Q powers. But then the question that you as a writer have to answer is, how does Riker get Q powers? Why? The answer the writers of this episode came up with is, oh, um, Q wants to better understand humanity, I guess? Because humanity has the potential to eventually evolve to be as powerful as the Q? Maybe? It's very thin soup. 
The basic concept of Q using the promise of power to tempt Riker is promising, but the justification for it and the depiction of Riker's actual experience of temptation just don't work for me. Exacerbating the issue with the lack of tension is Picard's role in this story. For most of the episode, he's entirely reactive. So many of his lines are just to repeat what someone else just said in confusion or disbelief. Beyond that, his role is to be the guy who's always right. He effortlessly outsmarts Q, he sits back and lets Riker do his gift-giving gimmick, watching with complete confidence, certain that the crew will give back the gifts and it will all blow up in Riker's face and show him how wrong he is to be tempted by the Q powers. And it works! Everything goes exactly like Picard thinks it will. No twist, no unexpected obstacle, no unanticipated complications to deal with. The hero smugly makes a prediction as to what is going to happen. That exact thing happens, and the villain leaves in frustration. Not exactly high drama. And then, literally seconds after Q exits, the episode is over. Riker just had godlike powers like a minute ago, but now they all assume their posts and the Enterprise gets back on course and everything is exactly like it was, as though none of what we just watched even happened. This sort of extreme episodism is a problem for TNG in general, especially in the early seasons, as well as a problem for Star Trek Voyager, so Hyde and Q is not the only offender, but usually we at least get a break between episodes before seeing that everything has returned to status quo. In this episode, we see things returning to normal in real time, right before our eyes. Riker just had Q powers. Q was just yanked, howling in protest, back to the continuum. Wesley was just a completely different person. Geordi just had typical vision. Worf just had a girlfriend. Now it's all gone, and it's back to business as usual before the episode is even over. What is the point? If the characters who lived through it don't give a shit, why should I? As for Q himself, he's okay. John Delancey is having a good time, seemingly doing what he can to inject some energy into the proceedings. His body language and facial expressions are a lot more animated and exaggerated than what will become typical for Q. I personally prefer more laid back, understated, withering smartass Q, but Delancey is working with the material he's given here and he manages to escape more or less unscathed. His delivery of his lines when he's in the monk costume near the end are funny and play the most like what I, having seen all seven seasons, think of as typical Q. I still chuckle at the way he holds up the cross to Picard and declares, I forgive your blasphemy! And even though the episode is mostly about Q and Riker, we do get a couple of Picard and Q scenes that nurture the petty antagonism between them that will eventually define their dynamic. They aren't quite the solid comedy double act they will become in subsequent episodes, but it's a start. So, it has its moments here and there, but Hide and Q is mostly a limp, lifeless episode from a show that has no idea what it is or even what it wants to be. Fortunately, it would figure it out eventually but not yet. Those are my thoughts on Hyde and Q. What do you think of this episode? Please share your thoughts with me in the comments. If you'd like to support this channel, and I sure wish you would, if you can afford it, you can do so by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash steveshimes, becoming a channel member by clicking the join button, or by making a one-time gift by clicking the thanks button, or via PayPal or Venmo, links are in the description. Please come back next week for another retro review. Next time I continue my look at Q episodes with a review of a show from TNG's third season, Deja Q. See you then, thanks for watching, and take care everybody.